In a world where identities intertwine and destinies collide, four young men in Bogota stumbled upon a revelation that would reshape their lives forever. United by chance and separated by fate, their journey of self-discovery unveils the profound mysteries of kinship and the intricate dance between nature and nurture. Step into the enigmatic realm where doppelgangers roam, secrets lurk in the shadows, and the bonds of brotherhood transcend the boundaries of biology. Prepare to be captivated by a tale of uncanny resemblances, familial turmoil, and the relentless pursuit of truth in the heart-stirring saga of Twins of Fate. Watch till the end to witness the profound journey of identity, family, and connection unfold. Like, share, and comment to join the conversation and delve deeper into the complexities of twinhood and human relationships. In the summer of 2013, Janeth and Laura embarked on a quest for pork ribs for a barbecue. They headed to a nearby grocery store where Janeth's boyfriend's cousin, William, worked as a butcher. However, Laura was surprised to see someone she recognized, Jorge, from her workplace behind the counter. Despite Laura's insistence that it was Jorge, Janeth claimed it was William. Laura couldn't shake the feeling that Jorge was pretending to be someone else due to his lack of acknowledgement. This uncanny resemblance led Laura to believe Jorge was hiding his moonlighting job out of embarrassment. Laura's confusion persisted until she learned from Jorge himself that he had a twin named Carlos, who they said looked nothing alike. This revelation left Jorge questioning his identity and family dynamics, prompting introspection about the truths he may have been avoiding. Let's meet the sets of twins. Jorge Enrique Bernal Castro is a 26-year-old pipe designer at an engineering firm in Bogota who grew up with his fraternal twin brother, Carlos. While Carlos Alberto Bernal Castro is an accountant in Bogota, on the other hand, William Cañas Velasco is a 26-year-old manager at a butcher shop in Bogotá who grew up with his fraternal twin brother, Wilbur. Wilbur Cañas Velasco is a butcher in Bogotá. Let's get right back into our story. Laura informed Janeth about a job opening at Strikon, where Janeth got hired. Eventually, she encountered Jorge, who bore a striking resemblance to William a butcher. Janeth showed William a photo of Jorge, who dismissed it as a coincidence. Months later, Janeth shared William's photo with Laura to show Jorge, who was shocked to see his doppelganger. Despite Jorge's initial disbelief, he realized the uncanny resemblance, especially noticing similarities between William and himself and his twin brother Carlos. This discovery left Jorge puzzled and unsettled, prompting him to question his family history. Jorge and Carlos, twins from a modest background, had built successful lives. Carlos excelled in academics and worked at an accounting firm while completing his degree. Jorge, once the homework copier, now walked a similar path, attending university at night while working during the day. Their cozy duplex was a far cry from their childhood home, but their success was bittersweet. Their mother, who had sacrificed for them, passed away before they could repay her. Jorge, on his way home from class, pondered how to share his discovery with Carlos. He'd already briefed their sister, Diana, who warned against teasing Carlos. Their playful banter often danced on the edge of annoyance for Carlos, but it was Jorge's way of easing tension. Arriving home, Jorge found Carlos on the phone, a common occurrence. After urging Carlos to hang up, Jorge attempted to lighten the mood with jokes about telenovelas and hypothetical twins, but Carlos, sensing something serious, demanded clarity. Seated before the computer, Jorge revealed the startling photos, one of William, Jorge's newfound doppelganger, and others from the butcher shop where William worked. Initially amused, Carlos's amusement turned to shock when confronted with a photo showing William alongside a man identical to Carlos, both holding shot glasses. 
While Jorge leaned in, intrigued, Carlos recoiled, his anger rising. Who are they? he demanded, his voice edged with fury. The revelation shook Carlos to his core, stirring questions about identity and existence. The uncanny resemblance unearthed buried emotions and unresolved issues, leaving both brothers grappling with the implications. Their once playful dynamic now tinged with tension, Jorge and Carlos navigated newfound complexities in their relationship, their shared past reframed by the startling discovery of parallel lives. Jorge conveyed to Carlos the revelations he gleaned from Janeth and Laura about the young men in the photo. Hailing from a rural region in Santander, known for its hot-tempered locals and gun culture, they shared a birth year with Jorge and Carlos, igniting speculation of a hospital mix-up. This possibility hinted at an unsettling reality. One of them might belong to another mother, likely Carlos. Despite physical disparities between Carlos and his siblings, his deep admiration for his mother remained unwavering. However, the newfound doubt about his origins left Carlos restless, struggling to reconcile his identity and past. Despite Jorge's attempts to console him, Carlos opted to bury the matter, seeking solace in solitude. That night, tormented by the revelation, Carlos battled insomnia, grappling with the implications of his uncertain lineage and mourning the loss of his perceived connection to his mother. Meanwhile, Jorge slumbered peacefully, oblivious to his brother's turmoil. William, now the manager of the butcher shop, welcomed his cousin Brian for his 12-hour shift. Brian, Janeth's boyfriend, was hired part-time, and William felt a strong bond with him, forged during their days selling corn cakes on the streets of Bogota. In contrast, William often found himself at odds with his fraternal twin, Wilbur. Despite working together at the butcher shop, William was frustrated by Wilbur's tendency to prioritize cleaning over customer service and his resistance to William's authority. The following day, Brian shared with William some confusing photos Janeth had shown him featuring young men who resembled William and Wilbur. Intrigued, William reached out to Janeth for more information and received confirmation that either he or his brother had been sick and treated in a hospital in Bogota after being born prematurely at just 28 weeks. The revelation stunned William, prompting him to delve deeper into their shared history. He learned from an aunt that both he and Wilbur were born prematurely and treated at the Materno Infantil in Bogota. This newfound information shed light on the uncanny resemblance between the young men in the photos and William and Wilbur. Despite their differences, William couldn't help but feel a sense of connection to Wilbur upon discovering their shared past. The realization brought a newfound understanding of their relationship prompting William to reflect on their bond and perhaps find a newfound appreciation for his twin brother. While managing the butcher shop and navigating familial revelations, William found himself grappling with a mix of emotions, surprise, curiosity, and a growing sense of connection to his brother. As he continued to process the information and reconcile it with his perception of their relationship, William couldn't help but wonder how this newfound knowledge would impact their dynamic moving forward. William, caught up in unraveling the mystery of his birth, felt a surge of anxiety as the possibility of being swapped dawned on him. Despite always feeling different from his family, he never imagined he might not be theirs. Learning that Jorge and Carlos were born at Materno, Infantil confirmed his fears. Overwhelmed, William left the shop momentarily, returning to show Brian the confirmation text from Janeth. His emotions overflowed, realizing he was snatched from his rightful place, a missing person no one knew to miss. The news would shatter his mother, the one he sent money to and worried about when she was sick. He remembered their harsh exchange about schooling, feeling robbed of opportunities. As he wept, he grappled with a flood of emotions, 
his mother's guilt, the lost chance for education in Bogota, and the grief of never quite fitting in with his family. Brian, unsure how to console him, sat silently as William composed himself. Despite William's attempt to make it significant, Wilbur brushed it off, affirming their bond as brothers. You're my brother, he said, dismissing the significance of their biological origins. In the face of uncertainty and upheaval, William found solace in the steadfast loyalty of his brother. Together, they confronted the revelation, their bond stronger than any biological connection. Identical twins start their lives as fluke accidents, a wondrous result of a systemic glitch. The formation of fraternal twins is far more mundane. Two separate sperm meet two different eggs, creating a litter of two. Fraternal twins are no more genetically alike than any other two siblings. Their only trick is one of simultaneity. They are conceived and born at roughly the same time. The four young men in Bogota had each been raised as a fraternal twin, an identity in and of itself. Now, they realized, they were each an identical twin, part of a matched pair. Even before the four brothers met, each was already, unknowingly, aligning himself with the sibling with whom he shared a womb. Carlos and Wilbur were cautious, convinced that no one should pursue the matter any further. Who knew what trouble these people could bring? William and Jorge, however, were open to the possibility of an encounter. Within hours of the revelation, Janeth had arranged for William and Jorge to meet in a public square at nine that evening, soon after William closed up the butcher shop. Wilbur, initially averse to meeting the other brothers, felt increasingly curious as he looked at the pictures. He wanted to go too. Around 3 p.m., William spoke to Jorge for the first time and asked if he could invite Wilbur along with Brian and Janeth. He was relieved when Jorge said yes. Both noticed that their voices did not sound alike. Williams was huskier, and of course, there was the Santander accent. William also called Jorge Sia, a formality typical of people from the countryside. Jorge thought he liked this person's voice. He sounded not just nice, but good. As the time drew near, William's nerves silenced him. He had taken a break from work to visit the barber, donning his finest sweater, a black one with grey stripes. His military-trained habit led him to strap on his gun, a constant companion. Anxious, he paced back and forth. Meanwhile, across town, Jorge was also jittery. His brother Carlos couldn't accompany him, as he had a date he refused to cancel. Luckily, Jorge bumped into a university friend who agreed to offer moral support. At the appointed hour, Jorge stood in the square, scanning the area with sweaty palms and a tightness in his stomach. Soon, a group approached, and amidst them was William, wearing Jorge's face, mimicking his gait with uncanny accuracy. Brian captured the encounter on his phone, the ambient nervous chatter muted, the video depicted Jorge and William engaging in a peculiar, almost choreographed performance. They exchanged glances, smiles and gestures, their interaction possessing an intimacy akin to lovers on the verge of confession. Jorge, chewing gum nervously, scrutinized William, his hand pressing against his cheek in a moment of self-recognition. William, quiet and swaying slightly, seemed like a reflection in a parallel universe, as Jorge later described it. Jorge recognized the resemblance between William and Carlos, their shared brother. Excited, they went to Carlos's apartment, where Carlos was hesitant to open the door. Eventually, they met, overwhelmed by the uncanny similarity. They compared notes, discovering shared traits and differences, like Wilbur's speech impediment and Carlos's manicured hands. Jorge shared about their deceased mother, evoking grief in William. Despite the jovial atmosphere, they all felt a profound sense of loss. Jorge tried to uplift the mood, 
Emphasizing the expansion of their families, they bonded over shared interests, like supporting Atletico Nacional. After a positive evening, they parted ways, planning to meet again. Alone, Jorge and Carlos confronted their complex emotions, realizing everything was both the same and different. Carlos expressed a desire to be brothers, embracing Jorge tearfully. The study of identical twins, despite their evolutionary paradox, has significantly contributed to our understanding of genetics and environmental influences on behavior. By comparing identical and fraternal twins, scientists have unraveled the complex interplay between heredity and environment in shaping who we are. While early researchers like Sir Francis Galton laid the groundwork for twin studies, later scholars like Thomas Bouchard Jr. delved deeper, particularly into the fascinating realm of twins reared apart. Bouchard's research on identical twins reared apart revealed remarkable similarities in traits like personality and intelligence, challenging conventional notions about the influence of shared environment on behavior. Despite criticisms and challenges in studying such twins, researchers like Nancy Siegel continue to explore this field, seeking to disentangle genetic and environmental effects with greater precision. Recent studies, including those by Siegel and her colleagues, highlight the rich diversity within twin pairings and their unique contributions to scientific inquiry. The collaboration with Colombian psychologist Jessica Montoya, investigating two sets of identical twins in Colombia, offers a rare opportunity to delve into the intricacies of genetic and environmental influences across different twin pairings. The enthusiastic participation of the Colombian twins in the research underscores their recognition of its importance, despite the personal scrutiny and questioning involved. William's insistence on showing the researchers his childhood home reflects a desire to provide deeper insight into his upbringing and identity, bridging the gap between data and lived experience. As the research unfolds, it promises to shed further light on the complex interplay between genes and environment in shaping human behavior. While the sample size remains small, the depth of analysis and the unique circumstances of the Colombian twins offer a rich tapestry for exploration, akin to unraveling a series of nested Russian dolls, each revealing new insights into the human condition. Despite Jorge's efforts, Carlos felt lonelier, especially seeing Jorge bond closely with their other twin, William. Their attempts to communicate often ended in frustration. To express his love and understanding, Jorge got a tattoo of Carlos's image next to their mother's, offering Carlos some solace. This gesture, though painful, brought Carlos a sense of peace, marking it as the most meaningful gift he had ever received. At breakfast in La Paz, Carlos felt provoked by Jorge's comments on how his upbringing in Santander might have shaped his career. Carlos disagreed, citing his determination to succeed despite challenges. However, William, silently listening, felt differently. He knew firsthand the limitations of willpower. Despite his relentless efforts to become a petty officer, bureaucratic barriers dashed his dreams. William's upbringing was marked by arduous journeys for groceries and grueling manual labor, contrasting sharply with Carlos's more privileged experiences. To William, Carlos's assertion seemed dismissive of his struggles. He believed Carlos wouldn't have achieved the same success if their situations were reversed. Carlos's ignorance of William's hardships and the sacrifices he endured in Carlos's place fueled William's conviction that success often requires more than just willpower. After breakfast, the caravan left La Paz, navigating winding stone-strewn roads. The heat bore down as they journeyed, one driver wiping his face with a borrowed bandana. By 11.30 a.m., they halted near a gazebo in a grassy field, ready to walk. 
Zagel's purple suitcase, laden with interview materials, proved unsuitable for the path. William, accustomed to heavy loads, hoisted it onto his shoulders. As they progressed, he remarked on Jorge's strength, contrasting it with Carlos's. Eventually, William handed the suitcase to Carlos, who, despite his usual immaculate attire, trudged through the muddy terrain, his sneakers stained with earth. Carlos grappled with discomfort both emotionally and physically during visits to Santander. Despite attempts to connect with his biological parents, José del Carmen Cañas, Carmelo and Ana Delina Velasco, he felt overwhelmed by the constant presence of eager relatives. Even their initial meeting, marked by tears and a camera crew, left him strangely detached. As he trudged through the mud, a stark contrast to his usual vanity, Carlos's foot became stuck, a muddy mess coating his leg. In this moment, his inner turmoil mirrored the external challenges he faced in forging familial bonds. More than an hour later, weary, grimy and drained, Carlos and the group finally reached William and Wilbur's childhood home. It was a humble structure, devoid of modern amenities, with just wooden walls and a wood-burning stove. Carlos greeted Carmelo with a smile and they embraced warmly, but an awkward silence followed as neither knew what to say. William observed from nearby, looking immaculate except for a bit of mud on his boots, dressed in a smart purple button-down shirt. In contrast, Carlos wore a black baseball cap with a Batman symbol, a tank top and sunglasses, showing signs of fatigue. William gestured for Carlos to remove his hat and sunglasses, urging him to fully engage in the moment. Meanwhile, Carlos couldn't help but notice Jorge, skillfully mingling with William and Wilbur's family, something Carlos struggled to do. He felt irritated about their earlier conversation at breakfast, where Jorge seemed to expect Carlos to express profound gratitude for his circumstances. Carlos had pondered his alternate life many nights, recognizing the uncertainty and challenges he might have faced growing up with his biological family. He couldn't bring himself to share these inner thoughts publicly, feeling it wasn't reflective of who he was. The journey to Santander, with its quirky attractions like the second biggest hole in Colombia, served as a metaphor for the emotional depths the group navigated. Jessica Montoya, the psychologist, encouraged the young men to explore their feelings, revealing complexities and differences in their personalities. Carlos and Wilbur, raised differently, showcased both shared traits and nuanced distinctions. Carlos's desire to reconnect with his biological family prevatally highlighted his evolving relationship with William and Wilbur, showing a growing understanding of each other's motivations and ambitions. Despite Carlos's disappointment in Wilbur's lack of educational aspirations, their bond and mutual support were evident as they embarked on new journeys together. Carlos understood Wilbur's desire for more time together, yet he acknowledged Wilbur's acceptance of his solitary nature. Despite Wilbur's own busy life and new relationship, Carlos found a fresh start during his fourth visit to Santander. While his brothers rested, Carlos immersed himself in the countryside's beauty, engaging with Anna, his sister-in-law, for the first time alone. They conversed about her health and work ethic, though Carlos felt a relaxed, rather than an immediate, closeness. He rationalized his slower connection, contrasting himself with William, who effortlessly bonded with their late mother. Carlos pondered if his relationship with Anna might have deepened with his mother's presence, or if it simply stemmed from inherent differences between him and William. Siegel's research on twins, raised apart, revealed surprising differences due to varying environments. The young men's upbringing influenced traits and behaviors, observed during a week-long study. Despite divergent paths, they cherished their unique bond, contemplating its impact on their futures. Celebrating with dancing in Bogota, Carlos excelled, showcasing his moves confidently. 
As the night progressed, he wowed with a daring maneuver reminiscent of the Matrix. Despite appearing precarious, he remained steady. The brothers danced, intertwined yet individual, reflecting on their shared experiences, merging and diverging, embracing the complexities of their connection long into the night. The journey of discovery for Jorge, Carlos, William and Wilbur unveils the intricate tapestry of human connection and identity. Through twists of fate and unexpected revelations, they navigate the complexities of familial bonds, genetic legacies, and the influence of the environment on individual trajectories. As they confront uncertainty and embrace newfound truths, their shared experiences highlight the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring power of kinship. In their intertwined lives, they find both solace and complexity, forging a path forward guided by the enduring bonds of brotherhood and the shared journey of self-discovery. If you enjoyed this series, please like, share, comment, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you in our next video.